But let's go through some of these cards. Gamgi, or Gamgi, two power uh, elf who is elusive. Reap, if your opponent has more ember than you, steal one. Yep, that's a thing. That's a thing. They, not, not great. Shadows needed more steel, right? Yeah, absolutely. Especially when they're behind. They needed yeah. more steel. Yep. So we we move into fur, uh, furtive investors. I, I, I hope I pronounced that right. Get a bonus ember for it. If your opponent has more ember than you, gain one for each key your opponent has forged. So kind of a weird, uh, what is that, Velian analyst? Kinda, yeah. Kind of, but in action form, I don't know, not not super not super hot on it. It gets yeah, you a bonus it's, it's ember. It's a pretty bad card overall, but I mean, I think most of the players could agree that Shadows probably is due for some bad cards. I mean, all those Mars players out there. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm sure agree. <laughs> so. We move into Dust Chronicles. Gets you a bonus ember. It's an action play. If your opponent has more ember than you, draw a card. If you have more than your opponent, archive a card. Seems pretty dece. Yeah, I mean, I, I think overall it's pretty good. It's not something that uh, Shadows has a lot of. Um, Hidden Stash is better than this, in my opinion, but it's 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 pretty good. I didn't check to see if Hidden Stash is being dropped from AOA. It's still there. So actually, if you can get this index with Hidden Stash as well, you could actually add a lot of uh, cycle on your Shadows call because normally when you're calling Shadows, uh, you're moving your opponent off check. Like, that's the goal of house. Um, but for the most part, you're not actively moving through your deck that much. Um, but so if you have a deck that has a hidden stash and two of these, because I think this is a common, right? Yep, circle. You could really start flying through your deck on a turn that you effectively moved your opponent off of check, which is a huge deal. And here's a card I'm, I'm kind of excited for. I'm a big Shadows guy. I've always liked him. Uh, kind of tempo has always been my thing, even in Magic. Brended the Fanatic. Three power creature with skirmish. When you play him, you gain one. But when he's destroyed, you steal three. So my team and I talked about this a little bit the other day. Um, we're not liking this because, like, so Magda is a card I hate. But at least Magda, you have some kind of control because it doesn't have skirmish. You can throw it into your opponent when you have zero or one amber later in the game this one is harder to move off the board unless you have a way internally to kill it and i just searched pawn sacrifice is not in cycle here oh you know what that was something i was just about to look for was like a pawn so, like sacrifice. without pawn sacrifice not even being an option in your deck you're not having a lot of ways inside i i can't think of any offhand right at this moment that you're moving this off the board during your own turn so I don't know. I, I'm torn on this. I'd have to see it in play. How is it going to be destroyed? Other than, you know, if you have a big board and your opponent is forced to do board wipe, you know, all the other kind of things. Um, so I don't know. I, initially, I'm not a fan. Uh, and I could see that, you know, lo looking at it from a mirror or, you know, in, in its own relative thing. I didn't look at it as part of the set. So I can understand. Yeah, yeah this is this actually might actually, be. Actually, I just did difficult. another search. I don't even think needles in in cycle. Yeah, I don't see secret needle. So like, yeah, I'm not sure how you're killing this, right? And that so maybe your the, opponent's uh, end up being going the big to have control over when this dies. Yeah, and that's uh, that's going to be a problem. So I mean, maybe not yeah. as good as I originally thought. He so, seemed, but fun. we'll see. Uh, Obliat will be. Yet. Oh, I'm sorry. Obliat will be uh will be reprinted for those of you who are wondering. Oh, uh, well, Obliat would. Yeah, that's yeah. an answer. I'm not sure. I'm targeting well, my own people. Purchase him. Obliet. So I don't think he'd trigger, would he? Um, he's purged. Purged. Yep. No, nope, wouldn't trigger. He doesn't trigger. Yep. Uh, this would trigger it though. Uh, life for a life gets you a bonus ember. Sacrifice a oh. creature to deal six damage to a creature. Hey, there's the answer. It's a common. And so, the, yeah, so Life for Life is common. So you're going to see a lot of this. We we saw a lot of uh, Pawn Sacrifice, stuff like that. So, yeah, that actually is a really good combo. So you kill, what's his name, the Fence? Uh, the Fanatic. Yeah, the Kill fanatic. the Fanatic, deal six damage, steal three. That's a legit combo. But I without this card out, I think that other card's pretty rough. But yeah. there'll be tons of cards with both. And without tons multiple of copies of Life for Life, 
you might be sitting on it for a little bit, waiting for the combo to pull. So now you're chaining yeah. yourself. So I guess it depends on how how realistically can you pull it off. Yeah, still three is super strong, but you're going to get, because this is common and the other one's uncommon, you're going to get thousands upon thousands of decks with both these cards. So yeah, I think that's, that, that's pretty cool. There's going to be, there's gonna be a lot of options out there for that. And dealing six damage, that's killing a lot of things that aren't in sync. I would say that's, that's a lot that's, of board. Like, there's a, uh, even Brobnar, you're going to kill most of the Brobnar creatures. I think there's two that'll survive in the set that I know of right now. But other than that, you're killing almost all Brobnar. You're killing most Sanctum, killing almost everything else in any other house right all, right away. Yes. So that's that's obviously pretty strong. That's a card you're going to want to keep your eyes on. And Bad for. Penny is in cycle. So, so Bad Penny is I also. I hate Bad a... Penny, but some people like it. So here's another good Bad Penny target. Bad Penny's dicey for me at best. Yeah. I think she's a 50-50 coin flip, really. Yeah, I'm not, not a fan at all, although <laughs> I just got a deck today that has two of them. So, well, I, I guess it's not bad enough for me to dissuade me from getting decks that have her. Has it got needles, sacrifices, or just bad penny? Um, It's pretty much a dead card in the deck, but everything yeah. else is, is really solid. It has uh, the, the unique thing about it, the reason I pulled the trigger, it has... Uh, key charge, two fertility chance, witch of the eye, and Nepseed. I played it about ten times, and one of those games I did forge two keys in turn. Nice, that was Very pretty crazy. Nice. But uh, speaking of untamed, moving into it, we got uh, Bumblebird. We've seen this card lots of times. One power creature with alpha. Uh, when you play it, put two plus one power counters on each other friendly untamed creature. I think this is going to be a pretty neat creature. That's going to a lot of people that are going to like this card. I know the alpha is, slight, is a drawback here, a somewhat significant one. But when you're playing this to buff up other weak creatures that somehow survived around where they maybe not should have, like like if you give all of your little Mars weenies that you just played the turn before plus two, the board gets real hard for your opponent going forward because the Mars creatures in this set. So, Zookeepers coming back. You have some new Mars creatures that are crazy good. If you auto, like suddenly boom, they're all bigger than they were. Like that's a tough board to deal with, especially when inside AOA, the board wipe is is. I'm not gonna say it's better or worse because uh, we haven't played in these decks. It is definitely different. Yeah. No hunting, so, which unfortunately. So no, shoot, no. that kind of sucks. But uh, also keep on the lookout. I, I know they're saying. Uh, if you like the art of Bumblebird, he's getting his own sleeves. So uh, keep oh, on the cool. lookout for those. Uh, moving into Fang House, he is a three-powered beast. Assault three, hazardous three. So when pretty, I don't know if this is going to be good or not. I'm happy about this card because I have always wanted there to be more of both of these keywords in the game. Like When we first got the set, we read these keywords, and some people literally never see them. They just don't <laughs> because they're not that common. And, and um, they don't happen all too often. I mean, mm-hmm. Bear is the biggest one I can think of who has Assault 2. But, yeah. I mean, even then, when you're taking the Bear into something, more times than not, I think I'm trading for something to deal 7 as opposed to just dealing 2 to get something gone. I, I feel like I remember having a conversation with one of my, um, my, not my team, but like when I first started playing this, it was like my family, a bunch of friends that I call my family. Um, I think we we're playing for like three weeks and like someone, you know, saw me play a card and, and I said it has hazardous something. And he was like, what's hazardous? Like, that's how rare <laughs> that is. Oh, I played Flame Wreath on them. It's like, this has now has two power hazard too. It's like, what's that mean? Is like, Flame Wreath well, the only thing with hazardous? Uh, there's um, Briar Grubbling, horrible cards. Yes, two power hazardous five. Yeah, I mean, it's a two power creature with hazardous five, but there's no reason to attack it. Right. So what? You you have a reap one that you know almost every direct damage card in this game will kill. <laughs> so I don't know. Bad card. Yeah. No. No real. I, I like the art. It's, yeah. It's fun art. That's about mm-hmm. it. This one I think is actually pretty decent. Uh, Assault three is going to kill almost every elusive creature I can think of. That's a big deal. Yeah. So and this actually hits the board and is an immediate threat. And having because hazardous gonna, three, obviously. Yeah. You so know, if you want to attack to, into it, you gotta you gotta kind of think mm-hmm. about it. And even even at the three power, three power is a number that a lot of the direct damage cards can deal with. 
but a lot of the times you're going to have a higher aggro card in Untamed next to it anyway. Uh, I think you see that Hunting Witch is gone, and I think Witch of the Eye is also gone. But you still now have the Dusk, uh, Dusk Witch, I think, um, and a couple other things that you have to address that you're playing inside of your Untamed turn. Yeah, the only Witch to make it is Witch of the Wilds. Uh, it's still one of the better ones. And and I know, like, Choda made it because he's technically a witch and all that he's fun stuff. He's a witch. He, does, he has one spell. <laughs> I, I just, I'm just letting you know. He, he is card type witch. witch. So I don't know if that means anything to you. 